Hey, so I've been seeing a lot in uh, Reddit and other places of people adding templates that have a year of uh, entries added. So for example, journals and things like that. And as I'm exploring the API, it's interesting. You can throttle your requests through the API when you're creating to about one request every two seconds. So what I've done is I built an example of how you might pre-create a entire year of entries in say a journal via the API and via a template as well. So you can see here, I've got this script running, which is pointing to my entries here. I've got a bunch of mentions because I'm creating entries in real time. You'll see as we scroll, I'm at uh, April 6. You see it's creating one every two seconds or so using the date that I've specified. So if I click into one of these, you'll see it's already said to have my journal tag, me as the author and the date and a nice little timestamp and an icon. So you can see here that I've got a template that has all those things set in it. That script is running in the background. Uh, it'll take you know a few minutes here to create all the entries, but uh, this will allow you to do it so you can, at the beginning of the year, create all your entries for your journal. I'm just doing this as a bit of an example. Uh, I'm also using this to script adding the duty calendar for our local fire department, which I maintain. So real quick, we'll walk through the code that I wrote to do this. I'm using this library called async SEMA, which is a handy little rate limiter wrapper. Um, so here's where I'm saying that I want to limit to one request and the time unit is how, how long for each one. So um, I'm also using YARGs, which allows you to specify command line arguments. So by default, my RPS unit is going to be 2000 milliseconds and I can override that from the command line. So I use this limiter down here in this end where we're actually creating the pages. So you can see a wait limit that allows you to put a quick pause in between your requests, and then I call the create page request. Um, down in my actual function here, which gets automatically called, I'm retrieving the template. So you can actually get the template by ID, and then I call this create pages and I'm passing it the template and a series of dates. And my dates here are basically like a start date of Jan 1, end date of December 31st. And you can see here the months are zero index, so December is 11. So all I'm doing is looping through those events and doing date plus one and then pushing that to that dates database. Um, down in my create pages thing, I'm basically returning a series of promises that are the dates mapped to a create page. And so every time I'm creating a page, I'm writing a period to the console, which is why you see the thing ticking along here. And I've got this title date helper that I wrote, which basically takes a title prefix, a date, and then the title prop and the date prop. And all that's doing is it's going to return the title and the actual date that Notion needs in order to format each individual title properly. Um, so you can see here, I'm returning the date is, um, I have these props helpers as well. And this is all open source, so I'll share the link when I post this video. Uh, you can see here, here's the definitions for title. So these are when you're specifying a property that you want to apply. Um, I've got a bunch of helpers that sort of automatically format it in the JSON-y type format that Notion wants. Um, so basically we're calling title date, which ends up giving us a title that is formatted with a, a prefix and the name of the date. So that's why you see in Notion, each one is journal colon April 28th, 2022. So that helps you make that distinction. And then it actually assigns that date as well to that property. And then we're using those properties and we're calling this helper method called create from template. So I've already fetched the template. So I'm just passing it the template ID. Um, and you can see here that if I pass it a string, we're assuming that it's an ID and we're going to retrieve that template. Uh, and then this get template properties uh, is a bit of a, I've, I've written about this before, but this is basically fetching all the properties from the template and then it's reducing it into a format that the create API understands. So we're filtering out all the stuff that doesn't make sense to try to create. For example, we're filtering out the title because we don't want to create the title with uh, with the template title. We want to create it with our new title. So we filter out that title. And so that returns the template properties and overrides any additional properties we passed, which in this case is the title and the date. 
Um, and then it just calls the create routine on the pages API here with the parent database, which is our entries database. It copies the icon from the template and then it passes through any properties that you had from the template as well as the new properties. Um, so that's all that that does. And by the time this is finished, we have ticked another second or two away and we are creating an entire year of entries. You can see we're down to September now. So yeah, this takes a couple of minutes, but it's a pretty cool way so that you don't have to do this uh, daily. Um, you know, with typically what I do with journal entries is, you know, I plus, and then I use a uh, Alfred shortcut uh, uh, colon semicolon D A J and that'll actually insert the current date and that thing. So this is what I do every day. And then I would click the template entry. So this is going to, this is going to save me, you know, 15 seconds per day, which adds up. Hope that helps.